You know how I know you're gay? I slapped the bass big time. With my dick. When life gives you lemons, just say fuck the lemons and bail. Hey man, got a big box of porn for you. 60% of the time, it works every time. Slap it to bass. That sounded like Borat. Yeah. I love you, dude. I love you, bro, Montana. I love you, Holmes. I love you, bros of Goebbels. I love you, Machacha. You know how I know you're gay? Yeah. You like Coldplay. La Ooh, are we on? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen. It's a very special I episode. I don't know if I can even do this one. I don't know if I have it in me. It is finally my opportunity to explain to the world why Paul Rudd is the greatest actor of his generation. A, a generation of people, just so everyone knows what Josh is saying. Yes. Of his generation of yes. actors. Yes. Paul Rudd is Primavera. He's the best. Numero uno. Top numero e uno. <laughs> the best. Yeah. Yeah, man. He's great. And uh, Taylor Lautner, he's the best actor of his generation. Wow. Right after Paul. So that's what we're going with is that's just Taylor the, that's Lautner the craziness that we're at right is now. our comparison to Paul Rudd. Taylor, Taylor Lauder, fucking who acted himself out Twilight of Twilight La like the <laughs> that shitty Adam Sandler Netflix movie. Yeah, ridiculous six. It was ridiculous. And you're being ridiculous right now with your Paul Rudd accusations and whatnot. Here's what we're gonna do tonight. We're going to go on a career exploration. And I do mean exploration of Paul Rudd. Then I'm going to explain why he's the greatest actor of a generation. Then Justin and I are going to figure out if there's anybody better than him. Spoiler alert. If. Big if on that one. There's not. Yeah. Um, we're going to do our favorite Paul Rudd performances, which we both do. Legitimately like Paul Rudd as an actor. And he has had some classic performances. Everybody um, loves Paul Rudd. So this is not a Paul bashing slash making fun of session. So please do not think that. No. Um, Paul Rudd is universally loved. Correct. You know, he's the guys think he's hilarious. Yep. The women think he's handsome. Yep. And charming. Uh-huh. He's got great hair. Yes. You know, he's like the white Will Smith. But the best actor of his generation is such an outrageous accusation. Or an outrageous claim, I should say. I just can't buy into it. But you'll attempt to persuade me in this uh, dialogue, I suppose. And then we're going to finish with um, Paul Rudd's movies, Overrated, Underrated. Um, so are you ready to begin? I am ready to begin. I don't think I'm ready, but let's just let's. I don't think you're ready let's either. Let's do it. But um, so Paul Rudd. <clears throat> this is three papers worth of, of talking. Buckle up, baby. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right. Um, a brief overview of Paul Rudd's career. Uh, his first major thing that Paul Rudd appears in is the 1995 teen classic Clueless. Uh, as the ex-stepbrother opposite Alicia Silverstone, uh, this movie's an iconic snapshot of the 90s. It's Paul Rudd's debut. He's a teen heartthrob. It's awesome. You know who else is in that movie? One Dr. Christopher <laughs> Turk. From I was just going to let you bring that from up. Scrubs. I knew that that would he's be he's also the best actor of his generation. Um no, but <laughs> maybe like one of the best like oh shit, he's in that movie kind of guys cuz he's also in Remember the Titans. Yeah, he's, oh, yeah, he's, he's Petey. He got to get benched. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, you know, Donald Faison. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pretty fucking sweet. Uh the next year he's in Leo Dinar <laughs> Leo He's in Leo's big breakout movie, Romeo and Juliet. Were you just trying to say Leo Dinardo? I was, was saying Leo Dinardo. <laughs> Where are you going with that one? I was thinking <laughs> Joe Dinardo, the weatherman, <laughs> with Leonardo DiCaprio. Yes, of equal screen presence, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> in Pittsburgh. <laughs> Joe said it would. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> Uh, he's a supporting role in this movie as well, but it's a significant blockbuster that he appears in. Um, he then also helps two other A-list actors launch their careers in Tobey Maguire and Charlize Theron, Insider House Rules, um, again, under the guise of a supporting actor. But movies gain notoriety from having deep casts. We can agree on that. So Agreed. if Paul Rudd is like seventh on the bill, that's a pretty good fucking movie still. Well, these days, you know, 20 well, I years mean, ago. You know. Jesus, you know, <laughs> Avengers had everybody in fucking Hollywood except for— Oh, that's, for, a, that's a separate thing. Yeah, yeah. but—so, um, like, 
to me, I count that as a Paul Rudd movie, and it's important to put into his career. Then he – so he's got two blockbusters, right? He's got Clueless and Cider House uh, – or I'm sorry, Romeo and Juliet. He's got an Academy Award-recognized film, Insider House Rules, where Michael Caine won Best Supporting Actor and the screenplay won Best um, Screenplay. Mm-hmm. Um, so now he's going to make his first cult appearance in Wet Hot American Summer. And yes. just probably one of the best, like, dumb stoner character interpretations, maybe other than Scully in Fast Times at Richmond High. Uh, you want to talk about deep cast, man. Wet Hot American Summer. Crazy cast. Bradley Crazy Cooper's cast. like 25 in it, and he's like an unknown then. Yeah. You know, it's Liz Banks, Janine yep. Garofalo, yep. Christopher Maloney. Yep. Like, it's just on and on and on. I think you're you're yeah. leaving somebody out. H. John Benjamin, Elizabeth mm-hmm. Banks. Mm-hmm. Uh, Connie from the Mighty Duck series. Oh, yeah. Paul Rudd <laughs> makes out with Connie in that That's movie. Right. Yeah, she's the stuck-up babe in that one. That's pretty fucking awesome. Yeah, oh, no, he's... Is he the stoner? I thought he was like the pretty boy. He's like the like pretty the dumb, dumb pretty guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's like, he tastes right. like burgers. Yeah. I don't like you anymore. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they, they did that was you're talking about uh, the movie, the original movie in like 2001. Yeah. yeah. And then the they original. Did, they movie. came back like 18 years later. I think 2018 right. or 19. Right. They did the series again on Netflix with all the same cast. Right. Yes. Yes. And he was in that too. Um, that did not land with me like the movie did. I'm not crazy about Wet Hot American Summer. It's not my favorite cult classic. I mean, I like it. It's funny. Yeah. But the series kind of fell flat for me. Interesting. Okay. Um. So after his kind of like solid supporting actor thing, he starts to get some lead roles. Um, he's in uh, Shape of Things with uh, Rachel Weisz of the Mummy franchise or the James Bond franchise. She's in a bunch of stuff. She's not in the James Bond franchise. She's Mrs. Bond. She's married to Daniel Craig. <laughs> that's, that's I what thought I, that's I said Mrs. Bond. My that's bad. What I meant. Yeah, she, she's Good for Daniel Craig. Yeah. <laughs> he married a librarian. <laughs> that was perfectly done. I love that. There. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Uh-oh. What's he grabbing? Is it the mummy box set? Boom. Fantastic. Boom. Fanta- Where's the Scorpion King? Well, listen. <laughs> Where's the, Scorpion, the mummy tomb of the, the dragon Scorpion, emperor? The Scorpion King is in the special rock movie vault. Yeah, yeah. Where oh, it's okay. only rock movies, separate, and separate I don't place. open it unless I'm entirely yeah. alone. Where's the Scorpion it's King just like, 7? It's like Helga's Shrine to Arnold. <laughs> but oh, yeah. like a of bottle of Terramana and yeah, then yeah. just rock <laughs> merchandise around it. Uh, you think I'm kidding? I sadly do not. No, no. We know my obsession with the Rock. I love oh, him. we got to do a Rock episode. We'll get to the Rock. Oh my God! He was the just man. named uh, for the second year in a row the highest paid actor in Hollywood. Yeah, and he literally made what he portrayed on screen come true by buying the XFL. Basically, what Spencer Strathmore tried to do with the NFL. He did buy the XFL. Yeah, just, he's the man. Got the money. Anyway, he's the highest paid actor in Hollywood. It's true. <laughs> okay. Uh, so. That movie's important for Where a couple are we of at? reasons. Like early two thousands here. What, yeah, the, Shape okay. of Things. Yeah. Uh, Rachel Weisz, um, directed by Neil Laboot, who was like the darling of the indie circuit in the nineties. This got a lot of buzz as being like was going to be a big movie. It fell flat with audiences for the most part, um, but it's important because it's Paul Rudd as a leading man, and it's Paul Rudd showing a depth in character. Uh, whereas he's kind of playing a one tone character in most of these. And most of them are like either douchebag or pretty boy. Um, so this, he actually has to do some acting chops into it, uh, where he's entangled with the section of a woman to the point where he entirely changes his life, alienates all the people in his life, yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. Um, it's also just cool because like these two badass actors very early in their careers doing like a kind of different movie. Um, 2003, he appears in Friends as Phoebe Buffay's eventual husband. This might feel like something beneath the greatest actor of a generation, but <laughs> yeah, how many episodes of Friends is he in? Like, I don't, I've never watched. He's just Friends, like but... in the last two seasons, on and off. But like a significant amount of episodes? yeah, he's he's Phoebe's significant other. Okay. Um, and I think it's important because he's not the only A-list celebrity to make an appearance in Friends. Brad Pitt, anyone? Mm. Um, so, like, I think that 
what it does is it uh, it gives credence to him being a major player in our zeitgeist as Americans. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, in 2004, he's in another cult role as Brian Fantana in Anchorman um, as part of arguably the greatest ensemble of comedy actors in a single movie. Rudd steals every scene he's in, going toe-to-toe with the likes of Pharrell, uh, Will Ferrell, Jesus, and Steve Carell. <laughs> yes. That, I mean, a that... Killer, what a killer cast and what a what a legend that movie has gone on to be. No right. No pun intended. Legend right. Legend of Ron Burgundy. But... Um spawning the sequel in 2004 and i assume you're getting to this next is that the year 40 year old version came out it is yeah. yeah i think that was probably the first movie for me that put him on the map as the yeah he's great in a 40 year old i don't version. remember which movie came out first in that year but i guess the one two punch is you know really what brought him to the forefront of the zeitgeist for his comedic talents his comedic talents and i think what's cool about paul rudd and i'll get into why i think it's so important is that his comedic chops give him an edge over a lot of people. Because a lot of people can act their ass off and be Leonardo DiCaprio, who we know can be funny on film, but is not able to carry a full-blown comedy movie start to finish. Which, I think anyone in Hollywood would tell you how hard comedy is. Mm -hmm. Any actor, serious actor, would tell you how hard comedy is. And to be in two of the biggest comedy movies ever... And be a starring role in those. Yeah, he's not the lead man, but he is a huge character in both of them. And it's important to recognize that. Um, That's fair. But again, to your point, though, let's make sure we're crediting the whole cast here. I mean, he's part of an ensemble in those yes. movies. He's like fourth build or whatever after all the main guys. So he's not carrying these movies, he's, but he is, he's holding he's his own. He's originally and being a second build. In what? No way. In like the in the trailers and stuff, he's second build. It's now that Carell is a mega star. Right. And um who's the woman? In what movie? In Anchorman. Christina Applegate. Christina Applegate's a bigger star now. Like a lot of them were pretty small, nobody actors or like Steve Carell was starting to gain some traction with the office, but he had not reached, you know, Steve Carell type heights yet. Mm-hmm. So really the only big brand name in that movie is Will Farrell. Other than Paul Rudd. Maybe. Okay. Maybe. That's um, a, it's an interesting one because if you're looking at it when it came out versus now, it's just right. such a different landscape. It, it's to- and know? that's and the what, same, with, same with 40-year-old virgin with Seth Rogen and Jonah Hill and all the guys that were in that movie. And that's something we're going to talk about too as to why I think he's one of the greatest actors of a generation is that he's in all those movies. Mm-hmm. He's a guy that they went out and got to add to these deep rosters. You can't ignore that. Yeah. Well, the fucking Marvel works, being the, the prime example. Did they need Paul Rudd in in the Marvel universe? No, but they went and got him anyway. It's like at a trade deadline for sports when you add that extra veteran talent that just puts you over the edge. Well, there are certain roles that only certain people can do, right? I mean, True. that's you look at Guardians of the Galaxy with Chris Pratt, oh. and he's certainly not someone you would have ever thought would have been in a leading man role at all. And then it's like, well, you could argue probably shouldn't be for this character. This is kind of like the only guy for it. Like once you see him, you can't imagine anybody else. No, probably how Paul. No, because it's Andy in space. Yeah, this is basically what it is. Yeah. Um, Okay, continue down the filmography. So we got that uh, forty-year-old virgin. Then he probably gets his most dramatic role in an actual indie film called Diggers. Um, It was produced by Magnolia Pictures, uh, who's a pretty big indie house. They did uh, Tom Hardy. Yeah, Tom Hardy, Hardy's Bronson, um, Frank, which is a really cool movie if you've ever seen Michael that. Fassbender, yeah, 2014. Um, Goon, hockey like movie. Yeah. Got to put that in there. Uh, I'm still here with Joaquin Phoenix, which was critically acclaimed. Very much so. Yeah. Um, all Good Things. Uh, they do a bunch of documentaries, Blackfish, Cocaine Cowboy, Bigger, Stronger, Faster, Food Inc., Zero Dreams of Sushi, and the Scientology movie. Uh, this is important because most of the giant Hollywood dramatic actors came through the doors of Magnolia Pictures. Um, and again, it just puts him in the zeitgeist. He's in the picture. Like as as um, Gosling or Pitt or whatever is doing one of these like super indie movies, so is Rudd. Interesting take. 
<laughs> we'll, uh, I'll, we'll break this down later once we get through the whole filmography. Yeah. But interesting uh, take. Fair enough. Which leads him to playing a very the serious role in Knocked Up. Um, we think of this movie so much as a comedy, but it's Rudd's performance that brings breath to the movie as he admits how much he hates his life and his relationship with his wife. Um, if it isn't for Rudd's performance in this movie, we don't get the deliver uh, the delivering of the coming of age tale maybe as deeply if it's somebody else. Mm-hmm. He's very believable in this role. So much so that um, just names are flying Leslie out. Man. Who's the director? Judd Apatow. Judd Apatow loved his chemistry with his real life wife so much that that's why he made This Is 40. Mm-hmm. That's why Paul Rudd was cast in that role. Right. So. And Judd Apatow, I think we could admit being one of the biggest players in Hollywood. So Sure, comedically, absolutely. Um, in 2009, he gets a mega hit um, as the leading man in I Love You Man. I think we can admit, though, uh, its comedy is arguably one of the best movies of the decades of the 2000s. Um, it's also a moment to plant the flag amongst the Hollywood elite. He's got a blockbuster movie, him and Jason Siegel. It's huge. It's everywhere. It's quoted forever. It's one of the greatest of that decade. You got um, it, Joven. <laughs> <laughs> love you, bro, Migo. <laughs> I love that movie. That is my favorite Paul Rudd movie. It's such a good and movie. So it's probably the most quotable one in that, like, I think – I think that was his first where he's like the lead, right? He's the yeah. co-lead with Jason yep. Segel. And, yep. of course, uh, Rashida Jones is fantastic in it. But Love that's Rashida. his first movie that he carries, I believe. Yep. Um, he would do a number of blockbuster movies after this. This is 40. This is the end. Sausage Party, Ant-Man, Avengers. And then, obviously, um, Bobby Newport and Parks and Rec. Um, while also doing all of these great blockbuster giant productions he's doing indie films like the fundamentals of caring which is a netflix original starring selena gomez in her first non-disney movie this had a lot of buzz at sundance when it came out um all is bright which is a green street films movie another indie house uh prince avalanche another magnolia pictures um co-starring with into the wilds emile hirsch uh idiot brother which he stars again with elizabeth bank zoe de chanel and rashida jones could you talk about like Josh's dream like lineup of female <laughs> stars. Is in that a movie. it right there? I, it's are, pretty are close. Brother? I'd switch out Elizabeth Banks because you know she fucked over JD. It, just another Scubs reference. I was just watching that episode a couple nights ago. I hate it. Yeah, she did. I hate her as Kim. Kim Briggs. It Scrubs. ruins it for yeah, me. Yeah. She's great in um Zach and Miri make a porno. Yes. But shot in Pittsburgh. She will never not be Kim to me. <laughs> so I can't ever appreciate her in anything yeah. else. She did JD pretty dirty. Right. But, but Zoe and Rashida. Already your brother was actually a charming movie. I mean, it's uh, those actresses are all kind of playing against type uh, because they're a little bit more serious or not as not the fun, goofy ones. Right. You know? Yeah. And Zoe Paul Deschanel Rudd, plays their, the idiot brother of those. Actresses. Right. Right. So Zoe Deschanel of... plays like a very um, risque kind of like life kind yeah, of pulled yeah. apart. Zoe Deschanel. There's yeah. a girl for me. That's I mean, she's Brie and Emma, of course. Uh, um, I am married. It was produced by Big Beach, um, who did Little Miss Sunshine. So yes. another indie darling movie. So that's kind of the Paul Rudd rundown, if you will. The Paul Rudd down. <laughs> Are you happy with that one? Yeah. Okay. The Paul Rudd down. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm, I'm all right with that. Okay. So here's why I believe Paul Rudd's the actor of a generation. Okay, the first thing I want to talk about is his breadth of the things he does. Okay, it's blockbuster leading man. He's a great supporting actor. He can do comedy. He can do drama. He can do everything. He's an action star now because of Ant Man. Uh-huh. He literally has touched everything. Everything. He's- Counterpoint: blockbuster leading man is iffy at best. I mean, I'm sorry. Does Ant Man come to fucking? The top of your brain? The thing with the Marvel Universe, with the MCU, is that all of these Here's movies come the in with universe. a built-in audience, right? You know, Captain Marvel, it. Black Panther, and all like these later it. ones that are 10 years into it. Yes, they all deserve credit in their own right for how successful they were. But there's also a certain amount of people that are guaranteed to turn up for those, no matter who's in it, right? Um, him and Ant-Man, I wouldn't 
I certainly wouldn't say that he carries Ant-Man. You know, that's an effects-driven movie that's based on a bigger universe of characters. So it's not Paul Rudd's movie per se. You know what I mean? So okay, he's done some comedies that have done very well, like I Love You, Man, and some other ones right. that have grossed a lot of money. But sure. I certainly wouldn't put him as a blockbuster guy. He's a Here's... comedian who's been in successful movies that were lower or medium budget movies that did very well. And of course, the MCU, but that's sort of already guaranteed to some extent. And yeah, to your, to your okay, other point, but oh no, go ahead. Yeah, finish it. I get it. Mm-hmm. But he's taking a lesser known Marvel character and he's blowing it up to be a hit, and then more importantly, becoming a scene a scene stealer in the Avengers proper movies. And, yes, and, I mean, I mean everyone's, like, everyone in Avengers is a scene stealer because they all have, like, two scenes. And they're all so good as their characters that it's like, you know, Fat Thor's a scene stealer because well, he's, got, you know, he's only got a the handful best. of scenes in this one or whoever, you know? It's like I'm just know. saying that he holds his own in a very difficult thing, something he could have easily been lost in. Like, think about our girl Brie Larson was pretty much lost. Like, Captain Marvel didn't do that great. Dang. And then she's totally lost in that movie. She's she's not anybody in that movie. Paul Rudd, I didn't see Ant Man because I thought it looked dumb. Even though I saw every single one of the other Marvel movies, uh-huh. um, I think it's the only one I haven't seen is the two Ant Mans. Actually, um, Disney Plus. <laughs> is he like talk about him as an action star? What is he do? I guess he does a lot of action. Yeah, he now, does. Or is it CGI? Him just like tiny little Ant Man? Like no, do he you does buy do him some... as an action star. Like is he ripped with his shirt off? Like what's... yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, he's 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 not like wet hop American summer like you know pretty boy <laughs> with a six pack kind of thing. But he does have some fight scenes outside of like you know CGI version of Ant Man, mm-hmm. um, and. More importantly, Ant Man is sarcastic, but he's not. I would not describe him as funny. He's funny in the Marvel mo- uh, the Avenger movies, but he's fairly serious. I mean, there's a lot going on. He's you know in a relationship with his his daughter, and you know losing his daughter, and all this other kind of stuff that plays through those movies. He's he's got a little bit more serious mm-hmm. side to him. Well, that's I think one of the skills of Paul Rudd as a comedic actor is that he has a very wide range of comedic types that he plays he can easily go from idiot slapstick to more sarcastic and very dry humor like he does in role models or like you just said in ant-man's where it's just kind of just naturally slips into his Mm -hmm. serious character Mm -hmm. you know so on the comedic scale i certainly would agree that his range is as broad as could possibly be because you've seen him play funny in just about every type you know that can be played but he also can play in legitimate indie dramas he can play in them as a leading man which is i mean i know you're not super over the moon about prince avalanche or diggers or any of the other ones we listed what's a straight drama that paul rudd has headlined that was either critically acclaimed or successful at the box office or had some measure of success to it as a straight drama because i can't think i mean the any that as a leading man probably nothing I mean, I haven't seen half the, like, diggers or the fundamentals of caring. Like, it, right. there's just not movies that people talk about, you know? So maybe he's really good in them dramatically, but nobody is hiring Paul. Like, Perks of Being a Wallflower, he has a small role as a oh, but teacher. Oh, he's brilliant in it. What? He's brilliant in it. Yeah, he's great as Charlie's teacher. Right. Um, but again, that's just a small role. Like, I can't see Paul Rudd carrying a dramatic – I think he could. I certainly think he could. There were scripts that I remember reading, and uh, we were talking about Paul as being a really good fit for them in serious roles. But nothing ever seems to stick because it's just not who Paul Rudd is and what people want him to do, I don't think. I, I do want to push back a little bit, and and I we're trying to talk push about— Push back, motherfucker. Push we're trying back. to talk about what's been accomplished, not what could be accomplished. Uh-huh. But especially with guys who maybe lean comedy, and Paul Rudd definitely leans comedy. I wouldn't say he's a comedy actor like a Will Ferrell or an Adam Sandler, mm-hmm. but he leans comedy. Right. Um, generally, they get that chance later to do that— big dramatic role where they're this like super different character and people are like wow oh man like punch drunk love for adam sandler um everything must go for will ferrell 
Mm-hmm. Like those movies did very well, were critically acclaimed. Like these were great movies from a comedy actor in a serious role. Uncut right. Gems now um, for Sandler. I think Paul Rudd gets that shot sooner rather than later. Well, I hope it's sooner. A guy just turned – he's 50 years old. He's been in the business for 30 years. Like, his shot hasn't come He out. has been, and yeah. that's another one of my points. He's been in a fucking blockbuster every single decade. He's been acting. Uh, okay. Well, that's, so that equals three movies? All right, 90s, 2000, 2010s. That's three decades, yeah. So you're saying three movies, one blockbuster in each decade. Yeah, I'm just fine. saying that that should – no matter if you're Tom Hanks or um, Emil Hirsch, you need to have a blockbuster per decade to be considered one of the greatest actors of your generation. Absolutely false. We just talked about Anthony Hopkins a couple weeks ago. That dude was in the business for 30 years before he did Science of the Lambs. And he, I don't think I he's one of the greatest actors of his generation. In a conversation for one of the best actors of his generation, unequivocally. He went How old is Anthony Wolf, Hopkins? 30 years. How Samuel old is Samuel Jackson? How many years did he go? All these guys that have late stage success, they don't have dec- a movie. Samuel Jackson, what the fuck are you talking about? He was like 45 when he was in Pulp Fiction. Jurassic Park? Same year, 93, 94. He's, wait, how old is he? I'm pretty sure he's in his 40s. And you could look it up, if not later. Because he's, I think he's like 73 now. So that would have been 30 years ago. So I'll say in Jurassic Park, which came out, I think, the year before Pulp Fiction, 93 to 94. I bet Samuel Jackson is. All right, he's 40. 71. Oh, God, Sam, don't die. <laughs> <laughs> he's never going to die, man. Motherfucker. He, Let's see like, if this actually, he has me. a characteristic wow. with Paul Rudd. We got, it, for oh, those go of you who don't know, we got a new computer at Thoughts from the Bench, and it is just, man. Tell me how right I am. I love to hear it. Okay, so here's. Wow, he started in the 70s. Jesus. What year was he born? Uh, He's 71. Samuel L. Jackson was not born in 1971. No, no, no. He started acting in 73. Okay. Well, year, what year was he born in? I don't know. Oh. I'll get back to the top in a second here. So, man. He, I, what are you looking at? I can't I'm see. I'm just like I'm, – I'm just going through his IMDb of like all the shit. He really didn't even do anything through most of the 80s. I uh, do. He was born He was born in 1948, which means in 1993 he would have been 45 years old. So, you're welcome. Why didn't he do anything in the 80s? <laughs> so weird. All right. I mean, granted, he's been the biggest guy ever. After that. Then, but, you know, right. for the first 45 years of his life. See, see, folks out there, success can come late in life. Don't ever Samuel L. Jackson, so be it. All right. Um, okay, so, yeah, I think you got to have a blockbuster in every – that's my – Sure. I There's don't think exceptions that's, to prove any the rule. Or anything, but I see there, right, okay. what you're using it to explain. Great, thank you. So, um, big movie in every decade. Uh, he's starring in indie films even after fame. Mm-hmm. I think that is the um, calling card of a great actor because they love the script or they love the movie. That's why they want to do it. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Educate me, Hollywood. A lot of actors don't find creative satisfaction in doing those bigger movies. Because the roles just aren't as emotionally complex or as interesting as they would like to be. Yeah. Um, by just by nature of being an effects driven movie or a franchise or something like that, where the writing is more sure. about the actual IP than it is establishing sure. characters and all that stuff development. So real actors will seek out that type of material. Nick Offerman being sure absolutely chief among a good them. Example of that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then there are, are actors like. Um, you know, like Mark Wahlberg, who does one every once in a while, but mm-hmm. prefers to stay in like the Michael Bay sphere, you know, right. or just the big blockbuster, right. you know, big bucks and big movies type yeah. of thing. And every once in a while, they'll slip one of those in. But yeah, I think I think the real actors seek out that material, mm-hmm. you know, in between all their uh, big franchises and stuff. Not everybody does, but but I think it's a calling card of a great actor to go find that role or that movie that they really loved or they wanted to do a deeper dive on it, a character it's possible yeah but it's, i again like when i just can't think of any successful paul rudd indie movies you know i even though they're maybe not successful i like that he seeks out that kind of thing yeah sure but if we're talking greatest actor of a generation he needs to have success in those movies otherwise it's like good try buddy <laughs> you know 
it's like eh, participation trophy. You well, tried, and I respect it. You can see on the uh, rundown here that we're going to get into Paul Rudd is better than, and I'm going to really press your your knowledge of some of these actors because I don't think some of them have done indie stuff like Paul Rudd has done. Ha! Huh, okay. You said. Hang on, just hang on. Um, then I just want to talk about. Again, the breadth of his ability. He's a comedy star. He's on television. He's been on a number of different TV shows, um, and he's a blockbuster actor. So he can pull off an indie drama, even if it's not successful. He can pull it off. He can do, obviously, the biggest comedies out there. Um, He can do television. He can do blockbusters. He just um, released the new Netflix series. Um, We're just talking about it before the show. Uh, living with yourself um we've watched a couple episodes of that and it's awesome um and he's very serious in that in the one episode that you saw we watched five actually i thought anna said one episode she watched one episode she was on her phone i watched five episodes yeah because i watch things i'm a consumer isn't it like dark comedy yeah serious uh mm. It's it's not as serious as Black Mirror, but it's closer to Black Mirror than it is um, Miss Mabel. Hmm. Okay. All right. Miss Maisel. Or Maisel, thank you. Interesting. Um, so that is my reasoning why Paul Rudd's the greatest actor of a generation. Okay. I no. am going to use those, those checkboxes against – your list of actors yeah i have put together a list of 10 actors of paul rudd's generation Mm -hmm. who i would absolutely qualify as being in the conversation or i would i would put in the conversation for being one of the best actors of their generation and we're gonna see where paul rudd falls in line with these other people and we're gonna find out yeah right after this commercial break Let's dive right into sports, because I have strong opinions on that. Which college team could beat a professional team in the same sport right now? Okay. There is not a single answer that is better than the LSU Tigers defeating the Cincinnati Bengals. Even if I know the pitch that's coming, every other part of me is still normal. That's why it's frustrating for me, Greg. It's like, it's like okay, if I know what something is coming, I know ahead of time, I still have to be able to do the action to get the result that I need. Okay, so they won three games yes. in 10 years with yes. three rebuilds. I don't lose in arguments. Especially right. about fast food, so yeah. <laughs> you will never walk alone. Guess what? Now you will. Coronavirus. <laughs> I barely touch my girlfriend's cat. The most I'd be willing to do is like just kind of put my finger on its forehead and just like... All right, ladies and gentlemen, with us is uh, Alex Kazor from Steelers Depot. We are live with Ryan Smith, professional cornhole player in the ACL. Ryan, what all franchises were you able to work with in the NHL? Uh, with Phoenix, uh, Carolina, and Detroit. No. So here is Moorhead's ranking. Moorhead is my cousin. He is the rank king. Higher Top ice. 10 extra Power Rangers. Ooh. Okay. This is the top 10 emo songs of the 2000s. There's only one correct answer for number one. Why is F is for Family better than Futurama when Futurama is like Star think- Wars for potheads? Like, I know. I'm- well, I think- <laughs> I we have one. We have one one or two that are I'm mad so in the chat. Sorry. <laughs> You're welcome for that. All right, we're going to get banned. Two Beers Deep live every Thursday at 6 p.m. We talk sports, pop culture, all sorts of fun stuff, but mostly sports. And right now, sports are pretty great. So tune in tomorrow right here on Twitch. Did you ever talk about this man? That's the question. Uh, if not, I'm not I watching. don't think so. I'm not watching. I don't think so. I bet you talk about Paul Rudd, though. Oh, you bet your ass <laughs> I talk about Paul Rudd. Okay. So what segment are we in right now? We're in the actors that are better than uh, Paul Rudd. Is Paul – no, the question is, is <laughs> Paul Rudd better than so-and-so? And as I said before the break, I've uh, accumulated this list of yes. 10 – fantastic academy award nominee slash winning actors and actresses and we're gonna find out if josh thinks that paul rudd if he can justify better or worse then so right off the bat of paul rudd's generation we have the master uh who is 
in my book, unquestionably the greatest actor of his generation. And I think a lot of people would say that uh, without hesitation. Mr. Leonardo DiCaprio. Okay. <clears throat> Josh, why <laughs> is Paul Rudd not so good as Leo? So here's the deal. We know Leo can be funny in movies, but he has never been the lead in a comedy movie. Debatable. Uh, what do you classify the Wolf of Wall Street as? So that would be the one, as I was going through the IMDb's of, of some of these people to prepare my counter arguments. Um, Wolf of Wall Street, to me, is like whatever you classify Tarantino as. Like, Scorsese always has elements of humor in his movies, mm -hmm. but I would say that his are far more drama-driven and character-driven than a comedy is. It's not Anchorman. No, it's not a, a gag comedy, but The Wolf of Wall Street is certainly a comedically driven film. I mean, yeah, it's story and character driven, but also the the comedy element of it is just so heavy that you know, I would I, I, so I don't know I don't know of another genre I'd call it other than uh, a comedy that's dramatic, you know, a dramedy I suppose. But I mean it's very it's a very funny movie. There's a ton of funny moments in that movie. Thriller maybe? Thriller? A thriller? A thriller? Do you know what a do you know what a thriller is? A thriller? I I mean it's I feel like it's closer to uncut gems than it is like the mummy. Not that the mummy's a comedy, but you know what I mean? Like I don't know how you can say it's anything but a comedy. I really don't think it's a comedy. It's a character driven comedy based on a true story. I'm gonna see what IMDB calls. That's all right, it you're is. you're jumping on it. Cool. All Wolf right. of Wolf. That's what I think. It's Wolf of Wolf. Wall Street listed as biography, crime drama comedy oh but comedy's the last it's like yeah, it's, in oh, there. it's like your pokemon's water grass bug and this also electric anyway mm -hmm. so okay um so leo's never done a uh big comedy movie that's billed as a comedy um and you know this is where you're gonna need to educate me has leo done a like magnolia pictures-esque indie film since becoming Leo, which he pretty much showed up as Leo. Yeah. Like there was no growing into Leo, but has he, has he ever done anything like that? It really, it's hard to define it because all of Leo's movies make a good amount of money. Right. Because they are star driven and director driven, but in the nature of their subject matter, and they feel indie for sure. Yes. They just happen to do a lot of money because he's one of the last remaining bankable movie stars that people want to go see a, a Leo movie. But a lot of the movies over his career are essentially just indies that have a big director and a big star in them, which elevates it to having success at the box office, right? Like Shutter Island, you know, is a crazy, I hate bizarre – thriller like That's so bad <laughs> def, like that i mean you know it was i think a paramount movie just because yeah. scorsese's deal was there but just so many of the, like in terms of subject subject matter his movies are definitely more in the indie world than he's like he doesn't do franchise like big franchise movies right. or action movies right. like he doesn't do right. any ip movies he does character movies with interesting roles in otor filmmakers so we'll, we'll we'll count as a half sure I mean, because, like, it's not Magnolia Pictures. Yeah. It's not Green Street. You're focusing streets. so much on the movies these guys are in instead of their acting. I Like, I you're think saying it's... Leo's never been in a comedy, but you admit in Wolf of Wall Street he's very funny. So if we're talking about the greatest actor, that's actor of the a generation. skill of an actor, right? It... Range of an actor's talents. Absolutely. And I think as much as, like, let's be honest – like as much as as me saying Paul Rudd's the greatest actor of a generation is taking the piss out of Leo and all the other guys, right? I it's also to bring attention to the fact that Paul Rudd is also a fairly dynamic actor who has been in and around things that the big guys do do. Maybe not to the success, but mm -hmm. he belongs. I believe I believe in the conversation. Is he like he's the sixteenth playoff team? <laughs> Yeah, which uh, how things are going right now is not could be a cup champion. Be. All right, yeah. so I will I will say this as to Paul Rudd, I don't think that he is 
should even be in the conversation for the greatest actor of a generation like you do. But I think that in this conversation and just thinking about preparing for this week and everything, personally, I have appreciated his range a little bit more uh-huh. than before. And you Good. realize that it is a little bit larger than you would think. Like he's just not it's a working. straight comedy guy. He's but he'll never know. He'll never be in the conversation. Greatest of Well, let's keep going through this because yeah. I have arguments for against everybody. All right. So, you, so, so the question is: Is Paul Rudd better than Leo to you? Uh, really, a yes or no question. Do I have to? Am I answering this as Josh saying Paul Rudd's the greatest actor ever, or am I answering it truthfully? I'm f- you're John, up to you, man. I mean, if your if your question is, he, or if your statement, I'm just he's saying Paul Rudd. Paul and these Rudd. Guys are in his generation, Paul Rudd was an established star in the movie that Leo got his big break in. Paul Rudd's better. Here we go. Not Next an one. A star. He was not an established star. He was in Clueless. In Romeo and Juliet, that he was in for ten seconds. I don't know if he had a line in it. He's Mercutio or something. Okay, well let's go to uh, his Titanic counterpart, Leo. <laughs> Kate Winslet, uh-huh. very uh, highly esteemed actress, done a ton of movies, been with a lot of uh, very auteur filmmakers. Uh, She's been nominated for uh-huh. six or seven Academy Awards. Uh, and uh-uh. Do you think that Paul Rudd is better than her? Is she funny? Is she funny? Sure. No, you can't say sure. She's not fucking funny. She's not funny? Name one role she's comedic even a little bit in. I have to see a rundown of uh, movies she's been in. I'm sure there's one. I mean, she I, I she up. definitely – so she's been in some TV. She's had blockbusters, um, and she's definitely done the indie film. You keep stuff. changing the question. It's not is Paul Rudd funnier than Kate Winslet. It's is Paul Rudd more in the conversation – of actor of his but generation. But that's what I'm getting at is that from the the checkbox list that I gave off as to why I believe Paul Rudd's the greatest actor of a generation, if these these stars that you picked can't tick all the same boxes, they don't belong in the conversation with Paul Rudd. Leo, fine, I'll give it to him. But Kate Winslet, absolutely not. Because she's not funny. Because she's not funny. I don't agree with that reasoning at all. But that's part of why I think Paul Rudd belongs to the conversation because he can do drama, but okay. he's also hilarious. Okay. Uh, I will I will say that Kate Winslet is an incredibly talented actress, probably not known for comedy, and I think a lot of her roles are more on the dramatic side. So, so she's not funny. All right, next one. <laughs> Paul Rudd, you're oh, saying, is better than fucker. Kate Winslet. Okay. Yep. Next. <clears throat> Of the generation of greatness that Paul Rudd should be at the top of, according to Josh, Mr. Brad Pitt, fresh off his Oscar win for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, yeah. which he co-starred with uh, the first guy in this list, Leo. Is Paul Rudd better than Brad Pitt? So, you know, the funny sword that I was waving around at, at Kate does not apply to Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt is very funny. He's fucking hilarious. And he stars in Burn After Reading, which is fucking hilarious. I don't know if anyone's ever said that, but I like that you did. <laughs> <laughs> I love Burn After Reading. I fan. That's like if you're putting rank in the Coen Brothers movies, that's like, oh, I forgot they did this one. Uh, but uh, oh my god, it, I think it's just underrated then definitely. because I mean his like he's running around in a a bike singlet ninety percent of the it's movie, like working yeah. out. And, oh, so good. Yeah, he's so yeah, fucking his, funny I mean, in that movie. Brad Pitt's comedy is a little bit more on the sort of laid back, like yeah, yeah oh man, yeah, like you know type of side. But he in that he movie he definitely it. was a little bit more out, uh crazy, you know, outlandish type of humor. So educate me, Brad Pitt in small indie movies, anything. Uh, again, Brad Pitt falls into the Leo category of the movies that he does are naturally Indian nature. Sure. Like Benjamin Button, right? That he did with David yeah. Fincher is based on F. Scott Fitzgerald's short story about a, a man who ages backwards. But it does a lot of money because it has big stars in it. It has a big director and gets nominated for Oscars. So, I mean, on its face value, it sort of would seem like it would be an indie movie and it ends up as a blockbuster. Um, but... Like, he just did a movie last year called Ad Astra with James Gray, who directed, mm-hmm. who only mm-hmm. directs indies mm-hmm. uh, up till now. And the budget on that one was $80 million, which would not classify as an indie movie. 
but it was essentially a very intimate character driven film about a man and his relationship with his father and dealing with themes like isolation and things like that so with a very indie director and it just happened to have you know brad pitt and some effects and it drove the budget up but he is like leo in that he gravitates towards Absolutely. character movies yeah. and he is not a franchise action or not no. action movie but he's not like a big ip type of guy right, right? right, right. so well, he is an IP guy, but they're generally books. Uh, yeah, you could say that. Yeah. I, I'm, I shouldn't. Say, he's not a brand or franchise right, guy. Right, right, right. You know. Um. But, so I'd I'd put him very much in the same category as the types of Leo or the types of movies. Excuse me, that Leo makes. Okay, so then based on that, the conversation for greatest actor of this generation is now Leonardo DiCaprio, Brad Pitt, and Paul Rudd. And actually, for Brad, those of you keeping score at home, Brad Pitt should it should be noted produces only True. Indie films with plan True. b which is one of the most successful indie producers out there 12 years a slave and beautiful boy and all these other movies if beale street could talk like plan b is an indie powerhouse of which he is one of the three principals all right so and I get sometimes it you know he has supporting roles in those i get but, that okay so uh next one wait 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 answer what? the question is paul rudd greater than brad pitt in this generation <sighs> you have to answer all these questions that's why we're doing this segment you said, like, a tie Man, for Leo. Kate Winslet, <laughs> Kate Winslet, Paul uh, Rudd's better than Brad Pitt. Long, long I'm trying career. to think. Okay, so off the top of my head, favorite Brad Pitt movies. Inglorious Bastards. Okay. Um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Okay. Uh, Fight Club. Sure. Burn After Reading. <laughs> so that's like four Brad Pitt movies that I I love, but like mm -hmm. Mr. and Mrs. Smith didn't do it for me. Uh, trying to think, what are some other Brad Pitt mega blockbuster or you know big movies? Uh, he was in Fury as eh. the uh, tank commander. He was in The Big Short, albeit in a supporting role. Killing them softly. That was certainly an indie. Moneyball. Moneyball is Tree great. Tree of Life. I mean, again, like that Terrence Malick, that's a pure indie. Moneyball kind of was an indie that... Uh, Can I say they're tied? Assassinate some Jesse James. Uh, no, because your argument is that Paul Rudd is the greatest actor of his generation. You can't say he's the greatest actor. All right, well, I'm still I'm sticking with Paul Rudd. Okay. Still Re sticking with Paul Rudd. He has him. not been beaten yet. I know you want to say Brad Pitt is not worse than Paul Rudd, but you can't, so it's okay. I understand. Paul Rudd has not been beaten. <laughs> he's All right. He's defeated. He's undefeated. Undefeated in Hollywood. Next, we have the Thor's incredibly sister. Incredibly <laughs> lovely and talented <laughs> Thor's sister. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. The evil and sister. She's in that movie. Like, fucking pick, throw a dart at Hollywood. I have Marvel. no problem with saying that Kay Blanchett is the greatest actress of her generation, unquestionably. She is so fantastic, and she is able to morph into any role, any accent, any character, any size. I mean, there's your example right there, Thor Ragnarok, of her doing right. a blockbuster right. when she is more of the same as those other guys, just doing character-driven dramas. So Kate, Kate Blanchett, to me, is the greatest actress of her generation. Okay, so she's ticking a lot of boxes. She's got the iconic movies. She's got um, starring in an indie film. Plenty of indie films. Okay, great. Yeah. So she's got that. Where'd you go, Bernadette? Shot in Pittsburgh. I mean, Carol. I mean, the list goes on and on. Okay, so she's got that. Yes. Uh, she's got the comedy down. Mm -hmm. She was in Hot Fuzz. People forget that. I didn't know She's that. one of the villagers in Hot Fuzz. I didn't see Hot Fuzz, actually. So. All right. I'll act surprised. So what? Uh, she was the villager in Hot She's Fuzz? also a, voice, a reoccurring voice actress in both The Simpsons and Family Guy. Okay. Which is pretty fucking cool. Yes. Um, she was Galadriel in Lord of the Rings. So, was, oh, that's right. I always boom. forget that she's in fucking Lord of the Rings. She opens the series with Literally. a voiceover. Yeah. Crazy. Um, Feel it in the water. So yeah. she's got the comedy down. She's got TV down. She's got the blockbuster down. I just don't think that I've ever been like, oh, a Kate Blanchett movie. I'm going to watch this. Mm -hmm. But definitely if Paul Rudd's in it, I'm fucking putting it on. Because you know it'll be funny. I know that I will get something out of it. Interesting. Even though all the movies of his you've seen have only been the comedies. You haven't seen any of the dramatic ones and gotten anything dramatically out of it. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. That's not true. You didn't see Prince Avalanche. You didn't see Diggers. You didn't see... Okay, it's a little bit of true. Caring. Yeah. 
<laughs> Fuck you. I, yeah, it's, it's based not on that true. Oh, I'm gonna watch them. Yeah, she's been in so many great movies, so many big. Like, I am actually excited to see Prince Avalanche and Diggers. Okay, but yeah, so I'm Paul Rudd takes down Thor's sister. He's bananas. Fucking this shit mad. is bananas. Damon, I would like to just remind myself. Because I do this all the time. Matt Damon is not Mark Wahlberg. Matt Damon. Yeah, so, you picked a fucking picture that looks exactly I, like Mark Wahlberg. Because I, <laughs> I always confuse them. Yeah. All right. So, Matt Damon. Is Paul Rudd better than Matt Damon? Yes. That was very quick. Matt Damon doesn't Didn't do think any about movies. It. Is Matt Damon too vanilla? Is he like the most vanilla A-lister around? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Matt Damon movie. The Marsh- uh, the Departed, your favorite movie of all time. Mark Wahlberg's the best part of The Departed, not Matt Damon. What? Mark Wahlberg is the like tenth best actor in that movie. Are you kidding me? Like I love his role for sure, but right. he's like maybe top. Five. I I literally forget. Like I just give Mark Wahlberg Matt Damon's part in that movie because <laughs> I don't. I'm like I don't care about Matt Damon at all. I don't. I don't even know. What Born you're Identity. Who fucking cares? Everyone. That's a beloved franchise. No, it's not. It's shitty James Bond, which is shitty. Like it's. Wait, no. Hang on. Let me fucking do this right. It's shitty. Um, Mission Impossible, which is shitty James Bond. Mission Impossible is great. First of all, the Born franchise I never got into, but I respect for how much people love it. That's it's, for sure. He's not better than Paul Rudd. The Martian, Interstellar. He's worked with Coen Brothers a whole eh, bunch. Eh. I mean, it's a Mark Wahlberg. Not Mark Wahlberg. Matt Damon. <laughs> Case in point. Yeah, Moving on. My head now. Moving yeah. on. Paul Rudd is not better than Matt Damon. Amy Adams. Amy Adams. God. Yes. Uh, Amy Adams, who has starved for an Oscar herself, unfortunately. I think just... six or seven time nominee. You know what? Can I flip in that, uh, that the the Paul Rudd movie, Idiot Brother? Can I flip out Elizabeth Banks for Amy Adams? Sure. Because then that would pretty much – that locks it in at that point. Amy Adams is Also, girl. two uh, Office characters. Yeah, the purse that salesman point. that yeah. tried to uh... – no, Jim did go out there a yeah, couple times. Sure did. Yeah. Broke up with her on the boat. Kate, I think. Yes. Kate. Um, Amy Adams, yes, incredibly talented uh, across both film and TV, as evidenced by Sharp Objects, and obviously her success in film speaks for itself, but she certainly has done more indies than big movies, uh, but she was in the DC Universe's Lois Lane. Lois Lane, I think I said Lois. Lois Lane in the uh, shitty Zack Snyder, Batman versus Superman and stuff, but Nocturnal Animals with Tom Ford. She was in Arrival, which was a fantastic film. I mean... And we know uh, she's funny because of, one, The Office, but then, two, obviously, Wedding Crashers. Amy Adams, that was Isla Fisher, you dolt. God damn it! <laughs> you want to talk about confusing actors. Uh, yeah, yeah. Isla Fisher's Australian. I don't even know how you – well, they do Wait, Amy about. Adams is in a funny movie. Uh, Amy Adams, I mean, like, she does some comedy in movies like American Hustle with David O. Russell, but oh. what's, like, what's a comedy? She was in The Muppets. Ugh comedy i guess that's not funny the fight oh she was in leap year that's a romantic comedy <laughs> julia and julia sort of funny like uh doubt she was in night at the museum so she's very very broad range here but uh, broad range straight comedy but is she funny uh she's been in funny so. eh, i think she's had moments of comedy she was in tenacious d and the pick of destiny that's right so what's the movie right before that too uh Talladega. She was in Talladega, Talladega Nights. Talladega Nights. That was yeah. it. She was Ricky not Bobby's. fucking uh, yeah. Wedding Crash. Talladega Nights. She's, uh, she's, she's she's certainly not known for her comedy, but I think she can be She's funny. great in Talladega Nights. I, How's I her? Think she's like the reverse Paul Rudd. Like, I think she is, can do drama in every way that you, that you write it, and her roles can have elements of comedy in it, but it's just not what she's known for. Whereas I think Paul Rudd's the opposite. He can do comedy any way you want it, and he's not really known for his drama, but he can do it. I feel like she is – she's the reverse of Paul Rudd. This is tough because I love Amy Adams. And, um, How do you feel about Isla Fisher? Because you can't tell them apart. Sometimes. I can't tell them apart. <laughs> Amy uh, Adams is The Notebook. That's Rachel McAdams. God damn it. Not even not even close. Well, Rachel McAdams, McAdams and Amy Adams, Adams are separate people too, huh? Their names are They're, Mark Wahlberg and Matt Damon are not the same person. Yeah. And neither is Rachel McAdams and Amy Adams. Rachel McAdams, yeah, they don't even look alike. But the name is yeah, – okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, is yeah, Paul yeah. Rudd better than Amy Adams? Is he the greater of the actors of this generation? 
Yeah, because I don't even know who Amy Adams is, apparently. I named two <laughs> movies I thought she was in, and she's not in them. So by default, this one just does this. It's DQ'd. There you go. N-A. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Shit. And now we come to the big boy. Oh, no. Big Will. <laughs> Here's a fun fact. Did you know that they just announced this yesterday? They're going to redo The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air as a drama that touches on issues of race in today's oh. world, and they're shopping that show right now. Who's, who's, who's Will? Uh, I think it's going to be played by the guy. So this, this show came about because a fan made a video two years ago. That yes. was like, a, did you see that? It's trailer? awesome. That guy is now directing and producing. I don't know if he's starring in this version or not, but so they took that fan video that that guy made. Get the, uh, basing the new show off of that. Get the kid from dope. Uh, RJ Siler. Yeah. Oh, is that it? Yeah. Dope was a really good movie. Dope's great. Yeah. I think, uh, um, get him. What was that? Uh, Kiersey Clemens was in Dope. That she was really good. Get Dope. Or, um, or uh, who was in Detective Pikachu? Justice. Yes. Smith. Yes. He's yeah. good, too. I like him a lot. Um, is Paul, if you say Paul Rudd's better than Will Smith, I'm abandoning this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> he's done everything. you could. He's Grammy winning. He won the first Grammy ever for Best Rap Album, by the way. Grammy winning, Academy Award nominee, Blockbusters, Indie. He's universally loved. He's got Facebook... TV shows, the Red Table Talks that he does with Jada, and there's all these other clips and shit that he does. Uh, An entanglement. I, I don't know how you could possibly argue Paul Rudd over Will Smith. Is Will Smith funny, do you think, Josh? Do you think Will's funny? Has he done any comedy in his career besides Shark Tale, which we won't even talk about? Are you gearing up for something Just over taking there? a sip of the, the, uh, the truth over here. Hit me with your truth, which I will spit on and walk out of your house. Um, Justin... None of Will Smith's movies are comedies. What? They are all action movies. That is ridiculous. They are not comedies. Ever seen Hitch? Hitch is a rom-com. Okay, yeah. And part of the the com stands for mm. comedy. It's its own genre. It's not a comedy. You're saying, okay, have you ever seen The Fresh Prince? That's a TV show. And it's not a comedy. Uh, I would say that. It's it's a family like learn. You're just trying to, to find ways to show. say no to this stuff. Will Smith doesn't do comedy. Get the fuck out of here. Every movie he's in has comedy. Bad Boys for Life. There's no comedy in that. Granted, it's an action movie, sure, but uh huh, it is an okay. action. Okay, what about movie. is the genie in Aladdin? No comedy in that one. That's a kids movie. That's not comedy. Every see, you're just finding reasons now. He does he does humor even in movies like Focus, which aren't comedies, but but it's not a comedy. What about Shark Tale? You didn't yeah, that, that did well. All right. You can't possibly – listen, just because Will Smith has never done a straight comedy movie, you cannot say that he's not funny. It just doesn't make sense at all. Hang on a second. Wild Wild West, action comedy, hitch, romantic comedy. Like, it, this is every variation of comedy that you can have. Dramedy. I mean it... – Paul Stephen Rudd mm -hmm. is a better actor than Will Smith. You're insane. Next. And none of the viewers are taking you seriously anymore. Is Paul Rudd better than the McConaissance himself? All right, all right, all right. Mr. McConaughey. He's not funny. He's never done a funny movie. He's so, he's unhilarious. Of course you can't have Paul Rudd be better than McConaughey. Yeah, because he's not funny. Oh, my God. What yeah. comedy is Paul is Matthew McConaughey in? Uh, Dazed and Confused, the first movie he ever did. Hello? <laughs> have you seen it? No. Magic Mike, ever seen it? No. It's not a comedy. Not a comedy. The Gentleman was a comedy with Guy Ritchie, which just came out. The Beach Bum was a comedy. Harmony Corinne, which was hilarious. His follow-up to Spring Breakers. He did all those romantic comedies early in his career before the McConaissance, like Fool's, Go, Fool's Gold, How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, Ghost of Girlfriend's like Past. I mean, you're thinking of like, you know, what what action movies does Matthew McConaughey done? That's what I'm That's what I'm wondering. He only does action movies. What the hell are you talking about? Plenty of indies, plenty of big movies. Tropic okay. Thunder. All right. Amazing. Okay. I think I ran out of truth juice on the Will Smith one. <laughs> All right. He's a better actor than Paul Rudd in a few movies. All right. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> Rachel Can't Weiss. Oh. Uh, a know, librarian. You know yeah. she's not in James Bond movies, right? She's no. married to Bond. Just to recap for those and again, who weren't here for the good beginning. Good for Daniel Craig. Um, Not in Bond. She's Mrs. Bond. Yes. 
Rachel Weiss, um, not again, not known for her comedies, but incredibly talented actress. She was in Fred Claus with Vince Vaughn. Uh, so there's a comedy for you. But uh, most of her stuff. Is she iconic? Is she iconic? Is she a blockbuster actress? I would say neither Paul Rudd. I wouldn't say Paul Rudd's iconic or a Paul Rudd's fucking actor. iconic in the comedy world. How many times in the drama has world? Rachel Weiss hosted Saturday Night Live? I don't know. I don't know how many times Paul Rudd's hosted Saturday Night Live. Four. Okay, we'll look up Rachel Weiss. How many you're, times? You're skewing this so Rachel much towards comedy. It doesn't make any sense. Weiss hosted <laughs> SNL. You can't just base everything on comedy. Definitely, maybe rom com. I Red don't think Claus, she's ever. Com. She's never, never hosted Saturday Night Live. Okay, well, I don't know when all of a sudden that became a factor since you haven't mentioned that with any of the previous actors. I'm just talking about icons. All of the other actors, you could easily be like, yes, of course they're icons. I don't think Rachel Weiss is an icon. Yeah, all the other actors who were icons, you didn't think any of them were better than Paul Rudd. It's true. You're just a pull. You're grasping oh, straws right shit. now. Who's next? RDJ, an alum of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I would. I'm not even gonna talk. I would love to hear your rationale on this one, buddy. I'll just sit here and wait. <sighs> I don't know what you want from me. He's perfect. Is I, Paul Rudd better than Robert Downey Jr.? No. Is Paul Rudd greater than Robert Downey Jr.? No. He is not. No. According to Josh Alsass. And that you could take to the bank. Stuff it, Paul Rudd. All right. Well, RDJ I'm glad this, this part is Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. We have one more we got to throw in here. We have a surprise insert at the end here. Hit hit next on the slide for, for one more. What the fuck? Oh. Last sneak in entry. We have Mr. Tom Hardy who Josh has only raved about for weeks and months on end and who we did a whole special on uh, a couple weeks ago. Now, you can't possibly choose between the two of them. If you had to, Paul Rudd versus the third love of your life after <laughs> your lovely wife, Anna, and myself. Is Paul Rudd greater than Thomas Hardy? We already know that he's not. Well, Tom Hardy is certainly, I don't think I'd say a comedic actor. <laughs> you already know he's not, but he's funny. What do you want uh, he's like funny, he's scary. <laughs> Have you not seen Peaky Blinders? He's fucking hilarious. No, Peaky I Blinders. don't watch Peaky Blinders. All right. He's um, Boston, but... Can this fucking segment be over? I've lost. Uh, You have lost. But did you know Tom Hardy's first name isn't Tom, by the way? It's Edward. His name, his name is Edward Thomas Hardy. Ed Hardy is his real name. Did I understand know? why he switched that. <laughs> I don't know. Right. This segment ends. Josh loses. Robert Downey Jr. at least takes the cake. Of all those actors and actresses, none could live up to Paul Rudd, of course. But All right. Uh, we're going to take one more quick commercial break, and then we will be back with our favorite Paul Rudd performances and Paul Rudd uh, movies overrated and underrated. We're calling it the Idiot Hour. Hey, Denny Hamlin, new NASCAR fan here. You really gotta like, but you gotta like blow. He wears the skull of his dead mother. <laughs> and then when he finally copes with the death of his mother, he becomes his mother. He becomes Marowak. Correction, Ovi is the greatest offensive talent we've ever seen. I am E. You dumbass. <laughs> Some, I don't think they were all better, but... We're back. Yeah. And it's time for um, some of our favorite Paul Rudd performances. So, Justin, why don't you go ahead and pick one first? Um, I had a tough time because, as we said, there are so many iconic comedy performances where he's very funny, even if it's not the lead role or a very large performance. At first, I had to say, I love you, man. Immediately is what came to mind. Um for my favorite Paul Rudd performance, but when I thought about it for a second, I You're changed wasting your time it. with that couple. Hang on. We gotta play the I Love You Man clip. Okay. Why do you say that? 
I saw the guy pull in. He's driving this, a Saab 9.3, which yeah, I'm not a snob. It's a great car. It's, but it it's great because Paul Rudd's house, not trying to be funny in this movie. Four, $4.2 million. And Doesn't he's hilarious in compute, that moment. Right? Well, I hope that's not the case. He told me he was going to make an offer. I think he's trying to impress that girl he hasn't slept with yet. How do you know that? Well, it's body language, you know? Like, that guy needs to fart. It's pretty clear, but he doesn't know her well enough to do it in front of her, so I assume they haven't slept together. He does seem to be clenching. Yeah, he doesn't <laughs> want to fart. Watch, when he gets enough space, he can let one rip, I guarantee it. Oh, that's a good move. Hey, go check out the kitchen, honey. I'll meet you in there. Okay. Now watch. Making his move slowly, move for Rick slowly Hulk. but surely. Watch right. the leg. Wait for it. Wait for it. Fart. Boom. That's a fart, motherfucker. Oh Boom. God. That's a fucking fart. Oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, he does play opposite Jason Segel so beautifully. It's a disgrace. Right. I mean, that's why, you yeah. know, I think what is your other one? Um, well, that was what I would originally say is my favorite Paul Rudd performance. But I had to change it uh, to a, a one that people can forget because it's so brief. Uh, forgetting Sarah Marshall. Shit. As Chuck, a.k.a. Kunu, on the on. Surf, as the surfboard instructor for Jason Segel again, oddly enough, in that movie. Um, but it's so brief, but he's just so dumb and hilarious in like the two scenes that he has, uh, you know, out on the water. Um, hang on. We're going to play that clip. Okay. I didn't have it originally, but, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Commercial coming hot and heavy in. Yeah. Kunu is his name. <laughs> uh, you're putting the clip on right now. Yeah. It's coming up. Hang on. Ah. Yeah. Jason Siegel goes to Hawaii to forget Sarah Marshall. <laughs> the less you do, the more you do. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta do something, man. Do less. Do less. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and of course, in the open, there's that clip where he's, when he goes, "When life gives you lemons, just say fuck the lemons." Yeah, and bail. it's bail. You know, such a good quote. It's great. But, uh, yeah, only a, only one or two scenes in that movie, but just so funny as Kunu. So, what about you? What's your favorite Paul Rudd? Um, I love Knocked Up. Sure. Um, did you puke on my shoes? <laughs> you, did you, want to like, did you puke on my shoes? So easily goes between comedy you know, and drama in this. And all your dreams and like at one just minute he's being De Niro, and the next minute he's like, "What changed for you?" Slamming this heavy you? line on this poor you girl. Do everything like, exactly the same. No, I mean I love what I'm doing. No, like say, okay, say, you know, before you're married and have children, you want to go live in India for a year. You can do it, but you can't do it once you have a family. You want to go live in India? I don't want to go live in India. Do you want to go to India? Go to India. I... Seriously, go to India. What about you? Do you want to go to India? Hey, I have a really good idea. <laughs> Why don't the two of you get, get into your time, time machine, machine, go back in time, and fuck each other? Who needs a time, time machine? machine? This is my time <laughs> machine. I'm going to throw you in my delight. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs a yeah. time machine? Genius. Yeah. That is, um, a, that is a great movie, and he's—I mean, he's not, it's not even his movie. No. He's just a supporting guy yeah. who comes in every now and then. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very funny when they're on shrooms in Vegas at Circus. Oh LA. my god! There are yeah. five different chairs in this room. <laughs> it's just five yeah, different very, chairs. very funny. And it's also like that little bit there is basically like him just doing his Brian Fantana impression, which um, people call me the Bry Man. The Bry Man. I'm the stylish one of the group. I know what you're asking yourself, and the answer is yes. I have a nickname for my penis. It's called the Octagon. <laughs> but I also nickname my testes. My left one is James Westfall, and my right one is Dr. Kenneth Noisewater. You ladies play your cards right, you just might get to meet the whole gang. <laughs> she gets a special cologne. It's called Sex Panther by Odeon. It's illegal in nine countries. Yep, it's made with bits of real panther, so you know it's good. It's quite pungent. It's oh, quite yeah. pungent. They've done studies, you know. 
Sixty percent of the time, it works every time. Every time. Yeah, that's that doesn't make look. sense. The hair and the, uh, well, the sideburns. Let's go see if we can make this little kitty purr. <laughs> yeah. The chops and the hair. Fucking love that. Fantastic. Movie. Uh, and then finally, um, his. So Wanderlust was a movie. Wanderlust was a movie that a lot of people forget. It's him and Jennifer Aniston. It's one of his shots at being a leading man mm -hmm. in a rom com. Basically, they get stranded at this commune where they're nudists and swingers and all this stuff. And so he and Jennifer Aniston are going to swing with this other couple for the first time. Mm -hmm. And he has to give himself a pump up in the mirror. And Pep this, talk for this, the orgy. Yeah. This, this fucking scene is incredible. Hit me. Do you like my erection selection? What do you think, Eva? Yeah? You gonna take it? You gonna take that dip? You gonna take that dick, huh? I'm gonna pop off a piece of my dick. Oh yeah, I'm fixing this to fuck you. I'm gonna fuck you. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get it all up in your vag. Get it up in your vag with my dick. With my dick. Do you like my erection selection? I just love the, do you like my erection so selection? Yeah. <laughs> so good. Oh. Every time. That's the conversation I have to give myself. Every time. Every if time. Up, every time. Fight <laughs> a nickel. All up in your Do you like my erection so like <laughs> Yeah. Exactly that inflection, too. So good. G but that's a genius scene. Yeah. That's yeah. an example of his just pure comic yes. genius. Yes. Yeah. So um, to close the show, what we're going to do is just go over some overrated, underrated of the um, Paul Rudd movie. So the first one up. Uh, do you just want to alternate? Uh, we can both do it, and we'll see. You know, okay. if we agree or whatever. Um, Anchorman. I, I don't know how you overrate the movie. Yeah, I. It's obviously not underrated, but I. I it's, think it's fairly rated. It's perfect. I think its legend is what it deserves to be. I agree. I agree. Um. All right. Hitting buttons, doing things. Okay. Ant Man. Uh, I didn't see Ant Man, so yeah. I, I just didn't. So look here's cool what's cool about Ant Man, and we kind of talked about it a little bit, is that it is a movie of a original Marvel character that a lot of people don't know about because he's not a big name. And I thought Paul Rudd did justice bringing him to life, and it set up so many important things for the rest of the MCU mm -hmm. that I think it is underrated in the MCU. Well, yeah, the whole quantum. Right. Uh, timeline or quantum reality whatever it's called was right. introduced i think was the second one any good i thought the second one was second one was not supposed to be that good the second one was really weird because it happens like the end of the first one is the snap happens and then the second one is like living in that world where it's post snap mm -hmm. so it's kind of like a weird kind of scenario i don't know it, it kind of falls flat for me but the He's first not one, in the quantum realm though right I can, honestly, I can't even remember. Like, I it, it fell flat for me. First one, though, underrated. Uh, next movie, Clueless. Clueless. I mean, Clueless, Clueless has become so iconic, I don't think you could say it was underrated. I mean, me personally, I never got into it, so I'd say it's a little bit overrated. But if sure. you look at the, the cast of it, you know, it's like in the American Pie category of just iconic piece of 90s culture with a great cast and everything. So... I don't think I've ever sat down and like, I'm going to watch Clueless, but every right. time it has happened to me and every time it is like, it's happened to me. Like I'm just sitting there and it comes on TV and I'm like, what's, Oh man, Clueless. Okay. I'm going to watch this. <laughs> um, it's a great movie. So I will say it is average. Or... Who's the other, who are the other girls in that? It's not Brittany Murphy. Brittany fucking Brittany Murphy. Murphy. Rest in peace, Brittany. And that's, is it Gabrielle Union or is that not? No, no, somebody no, no. Else. that I can't remember that it's been so long since is I've bring seen it on. Starring Cameron Diaz and Brandon. Nope. Yeah. Kirsten Dunst. And, uh, God damn it! Yeah. What's uh? I don't I feel know who like, anybody but I think is. that other girl for a was... movie podcast, you would think I would know who people were. Uh, that's what I'm here for, buddy. Right. Go ahead to the next one. I need to look up who that actress is in Clueless because I thought it was somebody. Idiot brother. Underrated. Not a lot of people saw it, but it's just a. Vi it's Tom or not Tom Hardy. It's Paul. R <laughs> still on the brain it's paul rudd at his paul ruddiest like sure. it is what the movie it's it's about their idiot brother who's paul rudd who's just this like happy-go-lucky bobby uh, newport sees the positivity in, in everybody like borderline hippie but just a 
dumb as a bucket of nails, you yeah. know, but it's just underrated. Not a lot of people saw it. Um, yeah. Underrated for sure. Underrated. I, I recommend. Plus, again, Elizabeth Banks, Zoe Deschanel, Rashida Jones. You can't yes. beat that. Um, knocked Up. Uh, knocked Up is definitely, I think... I would say it's underrated. I think maybe a little underrated. Just like it's certainly become iconic in launching the careers of, you know, the people's careers that it launched. But I think that some people might not have passed it up just for being a little too, you know, R-rated comedy. Like, they're just, you know, I think some people just might not have wanted to see this type of movie. And they are really missing out because not only is it hilarious, it's a good character movie. It's got great character. It's a good story and it's got some good lessons in it. And that's part of what Seth Rogen and those guys have always tried to do in their movies is make a story that makes sense and teaches you something and has a good plot line and all that yeah. stuff as well yeah. as being funny. Like the sure. story is supposed to serve the comedy, not you know, right. the other way around. Right. So um, yeah, maybe a little underrated. I'd say underrated. Um, I love you, man. Uh, I really hope not underrated. I think, you know what? I don't want to say overrated, but it's, I, I don't know if everyone loves it as much as I do. I think it could be a tad overrated. I love, I love you, man. Very much. I, I, I think, think it's probably his one of his most quotable movies. I think unfortunately it gets pegged a lot as a bro movie, and it, I mean it's about a bro man, so why would it not yeah. be? But I think um, a lot of the times it falls victim to that. Like everybody loves forgetting Sarah Marshall. I don't think everybody loves I Love You Man. Right. Yeah, I could see that. And, and you know what? The thing is, I Love You Man is just like Knocked Up and that there are some good lessons in it too. I mean, it's some about good stuff you know, in it. Yeah. the fear of getting married and you know friendship and all these different yeah. themes. Like it's It's got some good themes to it. I mean, uh, I Love You Man is a very nice, well-rounded, funny, heartfelt movie with I great agree. actors in it. I mean, I, I but I think, yeah, I don't know if everyone else, like the zeitgeist, overrated. loves it as much. Yeah. Yeah. Unappreciated. Right. Not overrated. Prince Avalanche. Uh, Prince Avalanche is, I'm going to say underrated just cause I don't think anyone really saw it, you know, but it's a nice little movie with them. You know, that's, a, that's a pure indie with him and Emil Hirsch. They play two mm-hmm. road workers mm-hmm. during the course of one summer. They just, all the things they go through bickering and fighting over, you know, like a girl and stuff like that. It's, it's a dramedy and it's, um, I just don't think anyone saw it. So I'm going to say underrated. It's not bad. It's kind of forgettable, but it's just. Based on the fact that no one saw it and it's a decent movie, I'll say underrated. Other than Diggers, this is the uh, discovering of Paul Rudd's back catalog that I'm most excited to watch. So, yeah, I think it's on Netflix. Yeah, it's a Netflix original. Okay. Or no, I don't think that's true. That, the fundamentals of caring. Thank is you. A Netflix that was original. Netflix original. Yeah. All right. Uh, role models. Oh, I think underrated. I think role models is friggin' hilarious. Okay. I don't know if everyone remembers it. I feel like it gets lost in the. It was 2008 or 9, so it was like at the height of Carell, Rogan, right. Rudd, Farrell. Like it just, I think it gets lost in the shuffle of that filmography of those guys, and it is fucking hilarious. Sean William Scott and the little kid. Sean William oh, Scott. Oh, man, um, is amazing in it. I forget. The little kid was in uh, another movie, too, and I, his name was uh, like BJ something. Hold on. I have to look up this little kid's name because he's so funny in it. But, um, yeah, Elizabeth Banks in this one, and you had McLovin was in it. Uh, over uh, overall, it's underrated for sure. Have you you seen Role Models? By the way, no, you've not seen Role Models. Nope, dude. And it's well, I you know, I love Sean William Scott to say that I love Sean William Scott, but I I don't think I'm ever like yes, I yeah. want to watch a Sean William Scott movie unless it's American Pie. Then you know, dude, Bobby J Thompson is the little kid in it. As okay, Ronnie, and he's so he's like this little crass kid that yeah i know the i know the plot of it yeah yeah so they have they're sentenced to community service and they each get a kid and uh paul rudd gets mclovin christopher mince plast who's like this nerdy lair really dude who dresses up as like you know a knight and stuff and that's a big source of them making fun of and then sean william scott gets this little foul mouth uh black kid who's like like the first day they meet sean william scott's like hey buddy how you doing and the kid just like drops his crayons. He's like, I don't want to take my pants off. Like just totally messing with him. Like it's uh, so- dude, listen to this cast, ready? Man. Okay. Paul Rudd, Sean William Scott, Liz Banks, Christopher Mince Plass, aka McLovin, Jane Lynch, Ken Jong, Ken Marino, who you would know if you saw him. Joe Latrulio, you would know if you saw him. Matt Walsh from uh Doctor Who. I mean, this is just a fantastic cast of comedic actors. You would know all these people when you see the movie. What's the uh it's not on our list, but what's the one where he co stars with Amy Poehler? Uh, he co-stars with Tina Fey in Admission. No, 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 no. Uh, oh, shit. He's, is he in Baby Mama? 
that's with Tina Fey. But I don't know if uh, he's in that one. This is not good I mean, TV. Amy Poehler is in Wet Hot American Summer. No. Which he is in. Sisters, maybe? Does that sound right? Uh, how, uh, no, no, he's on that one. That's oh, how do you Holtz. know? This is crazy movie, too, that nobody knows about. Oh, Owen Wilson, know. Reese Witherspoon, and Jack Nichols. Yeah, how Nichols. do you know about that movie? Yeah, I remember when that came out, and it was just like the bombiest bombs because the title sucked, and it's like right. the marketing was terrible because it's so generic and everything. Right. Like it had big names, but it's like, what the hell is this movie about with a terrible title? So. It's basically the movie with Amy Poehler um, is – Amy Poehler and Paul Rudd are a couple telling the story of how they got together to um, Ellie Kemper and uh, Bill Saturday Night Live. Hater? Yeah, Bill Hater. And, like, it is star-studded. Sounds hilarious and familiar, but I can't recall what it is. Amy Poehler... They, is Paul. it they came together? Does that sound right? Yeah, I think that's, that's what it is. It. Bill Hader and Kobe Smulders yep. and Ellie yep. Kemper. Yeah. Read that list. Paul Rudd, Amy Poehler, Bill Hader, Kobe Smulders, Ellie Kemper, Jason Manzukis, Michael Ian Black, yes. Randall Park, Christopher yes. Maloney, Ed yes. Helms, Jack yes. McBrayer, Keenan Thompson. Right? Yeah, Max Greenfield from New Girl. I mean, very hilarious cast here. Insane cast. Yeah. Um. And all pretty much right as they were getting big too. So that's pretty awesome. Uh. This is my super underrated Paul Rudd movie, Dinner for Schmucks. Yeah, I don't remember Dinner for Schmucks very well. But look at Steve Carell. Like just looking at this poster, I don't want to watch it. What? It just looks so bad. It looks like I feel like it was the cheesiest, dumbest, trying so hard to be funny slapstick that it just came off as like moronically dumb. So this this movie is. Basically, you know, uh, Paul Rudd is some big fancy lawyer and he has to bring an idiot to dinner to, like, advance his career with his boss, right? And Zach Galifianakis is in it. There's a bunch of other awesome actor or comedy actors in it. But Paul Rudd plays the straight man the entire time and, like, is, like, kind of weirded out by this, but he really wants to advance his career. He's dating um, this girl who uh, is the art dealer to um, Gideon is played by the guy who um, plays the voice in Moana of the Crab. It's shiny. Do you know who I'm talking about? No. I don't, Moana it's so knows fucking the awesome. <laughs> Moana cast. Hugo, Mike, and or, uh, Key and Peele. I, I didn't see Moana. I don't know what ideas in that movie. But uh... Uh, Jermaine clement okay okay and jermaine clement's like this super um exotic like art artist and like it's just it's so over the top and so awesome and is the whole movie based around like one dinner or does that happen at the beginning I, it's been so long it's, it's the it's I think the, it came out in 2010 it's the climax I seen it is the dinner okay. um and they're like trying to get him to be normal at the dinner but he's so dumb and, no like, he he's trying seat. to bring him to the dinner as the dumbest of the dumb at the dinner and like this, it's oh, uh, it's it's just it's worth fucking. Wait, watch. now it sounds like they all bring a dumb person. Yeah, they all bring that a dumb person. Dinner for schmucks is they all bring a dumb person to dinner. Based on a French film, actually, but uh, maybe I don't. I think I saw this one, but not the French film. I love this movie. But... It's underrated. Okay. Go watch it if you haven't seen it. I can't believe you haven't seen Role Models, so that hurts me to my core. I'll watch I it. Brought it tonight. You watch I'm Dinner for it. Schmucks. I'll watch. Role I've Models. seen Dinner for Schmucks. I just don't remember. Go it rewatch it. It's fucking hilarious. Yeah. I literally was watching it a couple of months ago, and I was like, did you watch Dinner for Schmucks? Totally underrated. I texted you that. I believe you. All right. This movie could not be underrated, understated, or whatever. It's fucking perfect as well. Yeah, this is probably, of that era, is probably the most – this is the one that started it all. Yes. For all of those guys. Crazy, random Kevin Hart appearance. Yes, Kev, I mean, <laughs> Seth Rogen is like 23 in it. I think Such it's one of the baby. first movies he ever did. Paul Rudd's Jane first. Lynch kicks ass in this movie. Yep, that Indian guy who's in all those movies. Oh, and just my yells God, he's obscenities. great. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And Catherine Keener and Kat Dennings are fantastic in supporting roles. I mean, yeah, this movie is – Another movie OG. with Elizabeth Banks and Paul Rudd. Wow, Elizabeth Banks is in all these movies. Yes. have done one on her. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is, I think, as rated as it should be. Yeah. Uh, how about Wanderlust? I have not seen this. Other than that, 
I mean, I've seen that clip seven million times of the the pep talk. Yeah. But Wonderlust is, I think, uh, appropriately rated. Like, it flew under a lot of people's radar. It's okay. Like, him and Jennifer Aniston is a weird pairing. Like, yes. the chemistry is just not there. No. And it's weirder because Jennifer Aniston's husband. I don't know if they're still married, actually. Justin Thoreau was in this as, like, the hippie head of the commune, uh, the guy from The Leftovers. And yeah. He was in Parks and Rec as Justin for a couple episodes. But, um, yeah, so it was just a, a movie that had funny moments but wasn't really memorable in any way. So it's not a movie of Paul Rudd's I would tell anybody they should watch at any point. Except for the pep talk before the orgy. I think that should just be on a loop. That you know, clip is incredible. In every guy's bedroom. Yeah when Pretty you need funny. it you know and the final one the cult classic wet hot american summer i think wet hot american summer is super underrated i'd agree because and this is something i didn't watch for the first time till a year or two ago but it like you feel like it's going to be so much older than it is because i think it came out in 2001 the first right. movie well and it's so, set in the 70s well for the people who don't know to, to, wet hot american summer was a movie that came out in 2001 that had all these stars in it before they became stars like Bradley Cooper and Amy Poehler and Christopher Maloney and H. John Benjamin, Michael William Black, blah, blah, blah. Like it's stacked. And it's, it's about these people who are playing uh, – like they're all in their 20s, but they're playing high schoolers at a summer camp. Right. Um, and then it, it was a cult movie, big hit, and then everyone went on to have huge careers. In 2018, I believe, they regathered everybody back together – and did a 10 episode TV show on Netflix about Wet Hot American Summer. Everyone's still playing like the teenagers in the same roles that they were. Like a very, very funny show that I don't think, I just don't think people really caught it because the movie yeah. came out so long ago. You know, like 2001 is ancient for a lot of people. Yes. And, uh, I think it definitely belongs in the classic era with Clueless and American Pie and stuff, but definitely on the less seen side. Yeah. Underrated for I sure. Agree. I agree. I would recommend both the movie and the show because I think they did such a great job of bringing everyone back and just making it the same. Like, yeah. so many of the actors look the same, and they're just well, like Paul it's, Rudd doesn't age; he's a vampire. Paul Rudd does not age; he does not age. But um, yeah, I, I recommend both the movie and the show. Great. This concludes. Wait. Okay. So after what? all of this, what the the issue of today's show? Okay. Was Paul Rudd is the greatest actor of his generation? period a direct quote from josh elsass who's sitting yes. across me right now after everything we've talked about all the actors we went through that we did is this person better or worse than paul rudd all the movies that he's been in do you still hold that to be true is that truth self-evident is paul rudd the greatest singular actor of his generation which includes leo brad amy kate all these other big Matthew McConaughey, Will Smith, RDJ, everybody, Thomas Hardy, Edward Thomas Hardy. Do you still hold at the end of this show? Paul Rudd is the greatest actor of his generation. You know, Justin, I hate this answer already. <laughs> I know where this is going. You know what, Justin hit me. I know what I am. And that is, that is a librarian. <laughs> Thanks for watching Thoughts from the Movies. We'll see you next week.